Hello, hackers! Let's get started. Oh, we need to set this thing to follow mode. Oh, yeah, do this. Yeah, let's do this. There we go. Awesome. All right. Welcome to CSC 365, Introduction to Cybersecurity. Um, everyone excited? Yeah, me too. All right, good. All right, so if you're going to um, kick the class off today, first things first, I am Jan. This is Connor. I'm Connor. We'll do the yeah. camera also. Just so everyone knows, we're also streaming this on Twitch. Yeah. Oh boy, this hand off. Oh, now you captured the. the All right, yeah, we're start, We're uh, live streaming this on Twitch uh, because this is a hybrid slash online class slash mega section, as we'll talk about. So, tons of people are watching at home, and obviously, you people here in person are here in person. Yep, we're uh, you know doing doing our best. Uh, I'm uh, fresh from ear surgery, so uh, it's gonna be gonna be exciting. I might start spouting off crazy uh anesthetic uh derived uh stuff when i told the doctor that i was uh going in afterwards to teach uh, he laughed at me so we'll see how this goes okay um connor is here uh authorized to uh, <laughs> remove me if uh, things go off the rails okay so let's talk about cybersecurity. We're gonna dive into an example first of cybersecurity going wrong and cybersecurity by example up there and then we'll go and, and talk about uh this class quick i'm gonna switch the thing so that people can see it nice all right so cybersecurity. this is the picture a picture of a very famous hacker it's not uh, the anesthetics uh going crazy yet this is Phineas Fisher or Phineas Fisher's avatar. Phineas Fisher is a uh, kind of hacktivist uh, that has since faded into legend. Um, and we're going to use some of uh, her exploits to look into how cybersecurity breaks down and, and how basically small security issues can just pile on and on and on. And these are the kind of issues that actually, for real, you guys will be looking at in this course, right? All right, the legend goes, and, and this isn't just legend. Uh, Connor and I were there when this was written. Um, and a lot of this kind of uh, is sourced from an interview that Phineas uh, actually did via puppet with was it vice magazine so. yeah this is a uh on, on on the right there is a dude from vice magazine interviewing this puppet um and uh finesse fisher had uh taken offense at um a uh, some business practices of a company called hacking team a cybersecurity company that uh at the time allegedly and in the course of this hack turned out in actuality was uh assisting um regimes around the world with kind of uh to using offensive cybersecurity to carry out things that finance fisher felt was unethical so as a hacktivist finance fisher broke into hacking team and uh one uh, sunny day uh, in July of 2015, through hacking team's Twitter account, released uh, all of their dirty laundry, all of their source code, uh, all of their internal emails, all of their uh, audio and video recording of their internal security systems, everything, right? All right, so we're going to look at this kind of as an example of, of a cybersecurity uh, uh, attack and then actual cybersecurity uh, event that that happened in practice uh and that we can really dig into deeply because finesse fisher then wrote a very very detailed write-up about what she did exactly step by step uh and published it on the internet 
Um, so how does Phineas go about doing this? Um, first things, um, actually, I just realized this link is out of date. It should be static that college slash all of that. Um, you can read the write up. I mirrored it here, or it's also uh, available on the internet. So, um, Phineas Fisher decided to hack the hackers. Step one of the hacker, hacking the hackers, was reconnaissance. Hacking team was a cybersecurity company, uh, actual very, very elite uh, group of hackers that took security seriously. They had very uh, little and carefully curated network facing infrastructure, um, had a really low profile and, and, and just really took security seriously. Right. So, uh, Phineas Fisher did a bunch of reconnaissance and realized, okay, these people are careful, but no one's perfect. One of the very few external facing servers, uh, devices that hacking team ran had a, uh, available firmware on the internet. The, the, the code running on these devices was open are not open, but uh, available to download. Phineas Fisher downloaded this code, looked through it, and by code, I mean compiled binary uh, software running on that device, looked through it and found a zero-day vulnerability. This is something that you will be doing an approximation of in this course, learning about how this can occur. Once she found this vulnerability, she had her way in. Right. Again, as far as anyone knew, including hacking team, that security was flawless. But one vulnerability and Phineas had her foothold. She uh, got into their network um, and started doing internal reconnaissance. So since she was in their network using a zero day that literally no one else knew about, could scan for, could kind of try to watch out for a compromise of, she had all the time in the world. She casually uh, looked around the internal network, being very careful, starting out with just listening on the network passively, which is something that you will be doing in this class, then doing careful, slow uh, network scanning, which is something you'll be doing in this class, um, maybe not as careful, not as slow, and eventually found an unsecured server of the physical security system because the security of these types of embedded network systems you know the the closed circuit tv etc cetera, etc cetera, is terrible but it's something that if you are a company with a physical presence you're going to run a physical security system right you're going to buy it from a vendor they're going to set it up and then their security issues become your security issues so Already, already, right off the bat, off of one exploit that no one else knew, Phineas Fisher managed to run into their network and retrieve all of their internal physical security recordings, which is already pretty brutal, right? If that was the only thing in the leak, it would have been a massive embarrassment and probably a lot of very secret phone calls that were recorded would, would have been leaked. But of course, she went farther. She started increasingly gaining influence in the network. So first, Phineas looked at uh, the servers that she had easy access to, and she found a backup server that was not well protected. And from the backup server, she managed to extract the backup of the mail server. Basically, Phineas' uh, hacking team had careful IT practices where they made backups. They made backups of the mail server. They stored that in the backup server. By retrieving the mail server backup, Finance Fisher was able to extract credentials from the mail server. And it turns out that these credentials were still being used by hacking people. All right. Now, if you are a company with uh, a, a, a whole pipeline of complicated technological uh, uh, networks and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Making backups is a very reasonable thing, right? And not a lot of people think very, very, very carefully about, okay, but what happens if someone gets on our 
backup server. All right. So now Finesse Fisher had the password of the uh, um, domain uh, uh, administrator for hacking teams uh, and kind of Windows network. But she still didn't have kind of the, the holy grail that she was looking for, the source code of hacking teams security software that they sold uh, to their clients. And using her access that she retrieved by cracking the mail server, she installed key sniffers on the uh, computers of the developers, sniffed keys until she found the password for a security monitoring system, ironically, that was connected to the development network that hacking team used and managed to jump into that security scanning system using that password and then spread from there to leak out all of the source code of hacking team. And then by using her control of the mail server, she sent herself a reset, a password reset email from Twitter, reset the Twitter password, uploaded the uh, leaked documents to an online upload service and tweeted. Complete compromise. This was a shit show. Uh, I remember I was a graduate student when this dropped and it was chaos. This is one of the largest hacks um, in terms of, of kind of uh, this very unique impact in that it was a security company that got hacked. Um, and also in that there was this uh, really in-depth write-up where you could see step by step how this security broke down. And it all started despite the fact that hacking team actually had a very, very good security posture, much, 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 much better than your typical company security posture. One zero day vulnerability in one embedded device that Phineas Fisher was able to leverage into a complete compromise of their whole network. All right. Now, we could look at really deeply at the postmortem of this uh, of, of this hack and say, okay, yeah, but they uh, they were using a physical security system that didn't have digital security. But you know what? Most likely, so is ASU, right? Uh, most likely, so is anyone here that has a physical security system at home. These things are typically pretty terrible. You say they didn't uh, isolate their backup storage system, but you know all of these things that we could point to. They reused passwords. They didn't have two-factor authentication. All of this stuff is easy to point out in retrospect. But the fact that we continue seeing uh, compromises on this level or more, just two or three weeks ago, there's another massive compromise where everyone's social security numbers got leaked again, um, shows that these are all hard problems. And in this class, we're going to dig into the problems. We're going to look at cybersecurity by example. We're going to exploit these vulnerabilities to understand how they arise, how they're used, and potentially how to try to prevent them. Sweet. Now, um, preventing these compromises, that last part is TLDR very, 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 very hard, right? As a defender, you have to get lucky every time. You have to block every shot. As an attacker, you just need that one zero day to land once. And you've got a good plan on what to do once that happens. Then you can leverage that into a situation like this. All right. So that's kind of the frame of the class. Uh, before we go farther, we're going to talk about something very near and dear to all of our hearts, especially Connor, ethics. Connor, all right. take it away. Thank you, Jan. All right, let's switch over to the ethics discussion here. <clears throat> all right, this is kind of going to be an interactive thing here. So we're going to discuss what are the ethics here, what happened with Hacking Team. So 
I guess the let's let's actually just leave that as an open question. Did hacking team do anything wrong? Would you have done the same thing? Anyone have any thoughts on the, the, the story that Jan elucidated for us? If you were in that situation, let's say you're you know, this hacktivist group, you go in, you find all of this information, is what they did okay? Anyone? Morally chill? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think that them hacking and releasing all of the source code on Twitter was not okay? Uh, I think it was okay. Okay, so you think it's good? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not an easy question. <laughs> There's a whistleblower out yeah. Phineas yeah. Fisher as a whistleblower. As a whistleblower, yeah. Does anyone agree, disagree? Is it okay to do that? Like, where are your personal ethics currently at? Go for it. Okay. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be your own personal ethics. What are your thoughts on it? Okay, so maybe it was ethically fine, but legally, uh, good luck to you. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, it's interesting sometimes when maybe your own personal ethics framework disagrees with the law or something like that, but you still are taking into consideration the law. Does anyone else have any thoughts on what happened here? Yeah. So you think maybe you would have potentially done the same thing, but not literally release the source code, maybe some sort of release of something that indicates clearly I have the source code, but not actually release the source code, for example. Okay. Does anyone else have any thoughts on this? You know, the ethics of this situation? Yeah. That's not exactly the same thing. So maybe like other examples, like the GTA Six hacking, is not in any way morally righteous or something. So it's just it's just bad, straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Against someone that you view as good, now they're doing the same thing against them. Is now is it okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I guess that's an interesting thought. Um, okay, so regardless of what you believe here in this uh, ethical situation, I, I think I would personally agree. There's some level of complicatedness to this ethical situation. Um, but what we're gonna, you know, right off the bat, start by saying here is, uh, you know, our opening ethics lecture of this class is as you kind of mentioned, some things you might view as maybe ethically okay, maybe we'll convince you that there are uh, more relaxed ways of doing these things that are, you know, the security community has determined to be 
the correct ethical decision, if there is such a thing as correct ethics. Um, uh, but the first rule, you know, we have to get out the door with is, you know, some of this stuff is definitely illegal. Like what they did, I mean, it's almost certainly right. It's illegal. Uh, and so, you know, we have to stress, don't do anything illegal in this uh, class. And, and what does that really mean? It's kind of a very simple rule, as this says right here, you know, never, ever, 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 ever hack into a system that you do not have explicit permission to hack. As it turns out in lots of, you know, bug bounty programs, uh, as security gets more and more modern, uh, the industry's kind of realized that it often appreciates lots of different people going into their systems and actually taking a look at it. But they'll outline exactly what this is allowed and what's not allowed. So, uh, you know, for example, I believe like Facebook has some sort of uh, guidelines on what it looks like if you want to attempt to, you know, hack Facebook. I think they have like a, a separate server set up that is running very similar code or the same code. And they outline what is permissible in that situation. If you're ever unsure, don't do it, right? If it's, if it's not your system and they, you haven't found the guidelines and explicitly, you know, what that uh, server is saying is acceptable as part of an investigation, never, ever, ever do it. Uh, it's likely illegal. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, so the question then is, how do you practice, right? We're here to learn. This is, you know, CSE 365, we're at ASU, we're in a learning course, and we're about to do kind of applied hacking in this course. So the way that we're going to get away with this is that we are going to tell you what is permissible. And as it turns out, we'll see there's a bunch of challenges uh, in this course, and those challenges are free reign. You know, you get to investigate them, hack them as you see, on the other hand, you know, we also have this course running on a server that lots of you will all be accessing. There is information on there like, you know, student information. That is not permissible, right? So the challenges, as we'll see, as you know, we kind of explain this course a little bit more, are permissible. Going after the core infrastructure of our servers is not permissible uh, with limited bug bounty exceptions. Um, so as it says, stick to software and services with bug bounties. Uh, you know, there's kind of a fun loophole in some of this. If you become an academic, you actually get some limited exceptions. You want to talk about any interesting, you know, studies you've yeah. been able to do because of that? Here, I'll let you slide into the uh, yeah. right here. So um, the, it still wants to follow. Come on. Nice. If, you, if you're looking nope. at Twitch, this camera like follows us, so that's yeah. why we're being weird. All right, right now. we're gonna have to wave to it again. Come on, camera, follow me. Nope, Connor, you have to hide. I'm hiding. There we go. All right, perfect. Okay. Um, oftentimes, something that that stops your security research into things is is the worry that a company will sue you for it. Right? Hacking software is that you set up. Uh, and that you know you own the systems on which it's running and so on is typically not illegal, but it's oftentimes against terms of service, and companies can sue you in civil court for violating that. Um, the um, Digital Millennium Copyright Act actually carves out an exception for researchers, which we use quite a bit. So, for example, I've done research that has led to um, the cracking of uh, copy protection on, uh, for example, Netflix uh, and, and Spotify and, and streaming services like that. And we were able to do this safely because we we're academics doing this for research to publish papers. Um, it's a cool way to really uh, open the, the amount of things that you can safely do. Um, and if you do well in this course, and we'll talk about what that looks like in a sec, then uh, my lab oftentimes has uh, research positions open. So you can work with us to do some cool security research. Cool. The TLDR is be careful. Be careful about ethics. You will learn a lot in this course that, you know, it's an intro course. In some sense, the techniques we're teaching you are introductory techniques. I mean, they are introductory techniques, but You'll be shocked at the sad state of uh, cybersecurity out there. Someone said on Twitch, as we were talking about Phineas Fisher, that uh, as the saying goes, the S in IoT, Internet of Things, stands for security, right? There is no S. There is no security. 
oftentimes still people design protocols and, and, and systems without actually thinking about security and then have to try to retroactively add that. And it doesn't work super well. All right. So let's move on. Next, next uh, let's, let's talk about what this class actually is. All right. Camera's on me right now. All right, sweet. Okay. So welcome to 365. Uh, we're going to have this slide deck. It's actually already, I think, pushed to um, uh, the website uh, that we'll keep adding to throughout the, um, the year. Uh, we'll prepend every kind of section we add with the date. Today is the 26th. And uh, we're going to start with a syllabus review. Right, so this course will send you down the rabbit hole. This is a meme straight from Discord. Uh, one of my favorite memes so far this semester, right off the bat. So you'll notice when you open Canvas, there's one announcement from me saying we will not be using Canvas and the syllabus link here to the syllabus, which is hosted on Tone Cop. How many people have now read that syllabus? All right. Well, we're going to read it again. <laughs> so let's follow uh, this uh, individual down the rabbit hole and pull up the syllabus. Cool. All right. Let's see if I can take. Whoop. Nice. Maybe. I got it. All right. Cool. I guess this camera is hidden from all of you. Maybe at the top, you can kind of barely see the camera, but this, this camera is pretty wild. Uh, okay, so yeah, we're going to talk about uh, the syllabus, the structure of this class. This class is unlike a lot of other classes in its format. You'll see we have some strange ways that we're set up. The number one first thing you're going to notice is we're not using Canvas. We technically have a Canvas. I'm going to try my best to put assignment deadlines and like synchronize your grade to Canvas because I, I, I don't know what it is with modern students. I'm kind of blaming you all. I, I guess can, Canvas is just, uh, it seems baked into education now. So we're, we're going to try our best to mirror things to Canvas from a grading and assignment deadline perspective, because I know a lot of you rely on that. Um, but the Pwn College website is the authoritative source uh, in this course. Okay, so let's jump into the syllabus and the structure of this class. So you'll see that on this uh, dojo's page, we'll talk about what the heck a dojo is, uh, we've got CSE 365 Fall 2024. This is where the entirety of the class will take place. This, this, this room right here, the Discord, these are like the only places, and the recitation room as we'll talk about. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead. And first things first, actually, how many people, hold on, as soon as it loads, maybe. Takes a couple seconds. And the issue is it gets your grades also. Okay, this, this right here. This is the setup page. I think the, does the announcement link to the setup page? Yep. The announcement links to the setup page. Okay, this is the very first thing you should do. You need all five green check marks. You'll see I don't have all five because I'm not officially in the class, so I can't link my ASU student ID. You will have all five green check marks. Raise your hand if you already have all five green check marks. All right, if you don't already have all five green check marks, your job, like right now as I'm talking, slash immediately after this class, is to get all five green check marks. If you've recently signed up for this class, as in like in the last, I think hour, I think I just updated the, the thing. I'll need to update the roster so that your student ID can be linked, but otherwise you should be good to go. Message me on the Discord if you're struggling with this. Hopefully the five things tell you what to do well enough, but if you are unsure, join the Discord, message me on Discord. I am Kanak on the Discord. He is Zardis on the Discord, as we'll see in the syllabus here in a second. Uh, message us. But this is your first responsibility. If you do not do this, we will withdraw you from the class and you will not get any credit for this class. Okay, so like in one or two weeks, we'll see how generous we're being. We will withdraw everyone that has not joined with this. It takes you one minute. It's going to be very simple. Uh, but this is how we can grade you. So if you don't do this, we have no way to grade you. Okay, so do that. Uh, now let's talk about the structure of this class. See, there's a whole bunch of good stuff. Uh, I want to start though talking about, well, what do we want to talk about? Let's talk about the first and foremost thing. 
the first and foremost thing, there are four sections for this class. There is a Monday class. Probably all of you are in the Monday class. Maybe some of you are not in the Monday class. That's probably fine enough. Uh, there's a Wednesday class. There is an entirely online class, and there is an ASU online class. However you have signed up for this class, you are all the same, okay? We are doing one mega section on Wednesday. We will not be repeating this lecture. We will be going to the next lecture. Uh, this is all one giant class. Um, I'll say probably for the first week or two, unless you have the day assigned, so unless you are the Monday or the Wednesday, probably don't show up to class because I guess we have some amount yeah, of open seats. About half we, capacity, maybe a little you, more. You can show up to a different class, but if you see that the room is full, unfortunately, we're going to ask you to leave. Uh, I mean, or people will sit under. Or people, however, we can do this. Yeah. We don't want to get in trouble with the fire marshal. Otherwise, we don't care. Uh, but that is going to be it. Normally, as the class goes on, some people decide they really just prefer online, so seats will open up. And in general, throughout this class, you'll be able to show up whatever days you want. And, and when we yeah. say, don't feel like you need to show up, et cetera, et cetera. We don't mean you can miss the lecture. Yeah. You are still responsible. You're either streaming the lecture live or catching up right afterwards on Twitch or on YouTube. Yeah. So if it's really boring, just wait for YouTube two times speed. It'll be great. Uh, but hopefully we're doing something valuable in this class where, you know, maybe it's got to be 1.2 times yeah. speed or something. I don't know. Uh, but you are responsible for all the material in this class. Uh, next interesting thing. So I'm saying that, however, there are no exams. Uh, what we're going to be discussing in this, most of these classes, with the exception of kind of like today, is going to be talking about the concepts related to the assignments. 100% of your grade is assignments. We're going to be discussing the concepts surrounding the assignments. Hopefully our discussion of those concepts about the assignments helps you with the assignments, uh, even if in some points, you know, we're a little more theoretical than applied. We're not going to show you how to solve level seven, but we will talk about the concepts in level seven. 100% of your grade is assignments. Uh, and specifically, if we look at the syllabus here, right here. Okay, there is going to be probably, I guess we don't guarantee it, but probably there will be 10 assignments. So uh, the first two assignments, in fact, have already been released and are due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Who here has already started on the first two assignments? All right, about half the room. If you have not raised your hand, it's not the end of the world. Obviously, this is the first class, so maybe you, know, you didn't get your announcement. Uh, but this class is going to move very quick. Please, 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 please start on the assignment today if you have not already, or you're going to be very sad. Yes. To calibrate, the first assignment has 84 challenges. Yes. The second assignment has 39. Yes. So these aren't necessarily even small assignments. They're not difficult assignments, but they're definitely not small. Yeah. And especially, you know, everyone kind of comes at this class with a different background to some extent. Uh, the, the modules and assignments are designed to kind of hold your hand along the way, especially these first two assignments. So they'll, they'll teach you, but some of you might be able to, you know, solve this first assignment in an hour. Some of you, it might take, you know, I don't know, six, seven, eight hours. Uh, so start now so you can figure out which category you fall into. No worries. If it takes you 15 hours to solve this assignment, maybe that's, hopefully it doesn't take you 15 hours. But if it takes you a long time, that's a good thing. That means you're learning something. If it takes you an hour, probably we kind of wasted your time for an hour a little bit. Hopefully not too much of a waste of time. This class will uh, cover a lot of concepts, but please just start now. Okay, so you'll see that on the syllabus, we have checkpoints and challenges as like kind of two categories for assignment one, assignment two, et cetera. The checkpoint is a pass fail. Uh, at approximately one week into uh, the assignment being released, the checkpoint hits. And I believe the checkpoint requires that you have completed at least 30% of the challenges for that assignment. So this is to make sure we just have to make sure you're starting early, especially on like a two week assignment. So at the one week mark, you will have to have completed 30% of the assignment. This is a pass fail. Hopefully, honestly, this is just like helping your grade. That means like the first 30% of the assignments kind of work double. Uh, so this is just kind of helping your grade, but also making sure you're staying on track. Um, if you are ever confused about when an assignment is due, 
what you're going to do is you're going to go to the grades page. You'll see I am currently failing this class, which is fine. It's pretty sad. Uh, but you will see that we have the deadlines for these assignments. OK, so 2024, 9, 1, 23, 59, 59, 59, always Arizona time zone, minus 7. OK, you'll see that I need to complete 25 of Linux Luminarium to get that checkpoint and 84 if I want to get 100% on Linux Luminarium, 11 for the second one, 39, you know, et cetera. OK, so look at this. This will just be a summary of what you need to do by when, et cetera. This is the, the truth of your state in the class as far as grades are concerned. OK. Does anyone have any questions about what I've discussed so far, the structure of this class? Is anyone confused about the fact that this is a mega section? Hopefully. I, there's a question in the back. Let's re uh, Yeah. yeah, yeah. Question. So the, the question was, are these assignments due every week or every two weeks? Depends on the assignment. So these first two assignments were simultaneously released and they are due on Monday. So one week, well, I guess Sunday at 11.59, it would be very clear. If, I'm ever, if you're ever confused, check the grades page. Uh, they're due so Sunday at 11.59. Some of the assignments, and in fact, most of the assignments in this class will be two weeks. And that's where the checkpoint makes a little more sense because the checkpoint will be one week in. Uh, so yes, it depends on the assignment. You can see our rough estimate right here on the schedule part of the, uh, the syllabus. This is kind of our rough estimate of the timeline of the assignments. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers that question. I saw there was another question. Question on Twitch. Yeah. What's the difference between assignments and checkpoints? Okay, so checkpoints are a component of the grading of the assignment. So the way that it works, as I said, checkpoint, you complete 30% of the number of levels. So for example, we will see, let's, let's go to the grades page. We will see that the very first assignment, which is called Linux Luminarium, has a total of 84 challenges. So, so far I have solved one of the 84 challenges. The checkpoint is a subset of them. You technically can do any subset you want. You just have to do 25 of them. So 25 of the 84 challenges, you do that by the checkpoint deadline. You get your pass fail grade of that. You either get the 30% or you don't get the 30%. Uh, and then the other grade is just at the actual deadline deadline. And that is just how many divided by how many are there that you did. OK. So there's maybe a question over here. Nope, good. OK. Any more que yeah, question. question? Oh. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we're not going to repeat this lecture on Wednesday. As a reminder, if you're in the Monday section, you're in a hybrid course. So some of this will be online, or if you prefer to also show up on Wednesday, that's fine. It's a hybrid course, which means we're not repeating lectures. As you can watch it on Twitch Live, or you can watch it on YouTube after the fact if you're busy during that time on Wednesday. Either way, you're responsible for watching all the lectures. Regardless of which section you're in, you're responsible for the live lecture on Monday. You can catch up after the fact. The live lecture on Wednesday, which you can also catch up with after the fact. And all pre-recorded lectures and all yeah. modules. Yeah. Yeah. So a uh, question in the back. Yeah. OK, there's a question of how many attempts. There's a good question about the structure of this class. There's not really a concept of an attempt in this class. You either get the flag. So we'll see here in the syllabus. Let me show you if you want to read more about it. This right here, challenge-based assignments with flags as rewards. You either get the flag or you don't get the flag. You can continuously try to get the flag until you either give up or you get the flag. So there's no concept of you get one attempt, you get to attempt until you're done with the challenge. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that's kind of nice. You know, there's, you work on it until you're done or give up. Uh, hopefully you don't give up. Uh, which maybe brings me to my next point. So we've kind of discussed the structure of this class of a mega section, et cetera. There's one other critical component of this class, which I have not yet mentioned, which is, where is it going to be the best part? Well, you can look at a typical week in this course, which is the recitations. Every single weekday from 4.30 p.m. to 5.20 p.m. in Brickyard Engineering 209, we will have recitation. I believe you probably technically signed up for one of the days for recitation. 
It is entirely optional. It's entirely for your benefit and you can show up any day. So the whole ASU, I signed up for Tuesday recitations, that doesn't mean anything at all. Uh, or if somehow you didn't sign up for a recitation, that also doesn't mean anything at all. Every single day, 4.30, every weekday at 4.30 p.m., Brickyard Engineering 209. The purpose of the recitations is to have a bunch of people that know the material, the TAs, uh, ready to help you. You'll like raise your hand with a question. You'll, I, I encourage you to just show up and just start working on the assignments. And if you get stuck, you raise your hand. That's kind of the format. It's very relaxed, like I need help when I want help, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. The alternative way of getting help in this course is the Discord. So when you do the setup, you'll join the Discord. The Discord is an asynchronous way. So it's not just 4.30 to 5.20. It is, you know, whenever you decide to send a Discord message, uh, it's going to be a way for you also to get help. Okay, I see there's a question in the back, yeah. Uh, it's a good question. So the question was, is the recitation in person or online? Uh, Monday through Friday at 4.30 in Brickyard Engineering, that is in person. There is no, that, that one is not online. I believe we have a recitation, however, on, I guess we need that. Oh, so it is right here. Saturday, we will have a synchronous recitation of sorts, not in person, only on the Discord at 4.30 to 5.20. We have, I think, a recitation voice channel and we'll have uh, TA or maybe multiple TAs, depending on how things go, uh, in that voice channel to assist you as well for a more synchronous thing. However, remember that the Discord is always there asynchronously. You can always just like ask a well-formed, well-thought-out question and hopefully someone helps you, eventually someone will help you, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah. So those are kind of the modalities of help. Question. Um, it's up to you. You're welcome to show up to multiple. Uh, I will say with a very, very slight caveat that if the recitations become like so overwhelmed that we literally don't have space, we might have to change course on that, but probably you can show up to any recitation. For now, we'll say yes. If we hit a problem, we'll adjust in this course with how we're going to run that. We do have an overflow room, which I'm not going to announce so that people don't get confused, but we do have a bonus room available that we might split the recitation into two and we'll figure out things, but we'll do that as needed for now. B-Y-E-N-G 430 uh, is your place. Mm -hmm. 209. Uh, B-Y-E-N-G oh, yeah, 209. Check the syllabus. 209, 209, 209. Okay. Questions on Twitch. Uh, can someone pass the class by just doing the checkpoints? No. Unless you have, unless we decide to institute a very aggressive curve, which we will not, no. So the, the checkpoints are 30% of your grade in total. So you're going to get, if you only do the checkpoint, you'll get a 30%. <laughs> well, hold on. Wait a second. Why, what would be the math? You, you would also then get 30% of the 70%. So whatever the math is, technically you could get maybe a 50%, still a failing grade, but I guess it's better. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly the math, but almost certainly not do more than the checkpoints, but do the checkpoints. So, Connor. Yes. If you can do so well, just doing partial credit, why would anyone power through every single challenge? That's a good question. Why would you do all the challenges? We have a very fun reward in this class uh, with a little bit of a caveat that's slightly different than exactly the course. But if you do everything in the course, you will be eligible. I believe, right? There's no way that's not true. Yeah. Yeah, definitely true. If you complete every single level of the assignments, you will be eligible for a very cool orange belt. So if you've seen the Pwn College website, there is belts at the top. These belts are real. There are belts. You can wear these belts to graduation, walk into an interview with these belts, whatever you want. Uh, you know, we've actually heard reports of people interviewing. I don't know if anyone's actually worn their belt to an interview. I don't know. But some people have, don't know that they have. talked about the fact that they have a Pwn College belt at like random interviews across the country, the world. And some subset of interviewers know about Pwn College and they will be like, wow, you did Pwn College belt. So it's, it's gaining some traction. You can brag about it. Yeah, uh, it'll be very cool. Not just 
on an introduction cybersecurity course, you're embarking on a way of life. Yes. Yes. A right. way of life. Awesome. Uh, can we whip the professor with a belt on switch? Uh, probably, probably not. Probably not. Um, so another question, Connor. Yes. Let's say you don't make the checkpoint yep. on the very last uh, weekend. You poke and your own lighters, you get 100% by the due date. Will your grade not be 100%? Your grade will not be 100%. So it won't be a 0% though, fortunately for you. We do have a late policy. Let's find where it is. So that Wait, but this isn't late policy. This is by the deadline they completed. By the deadline. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if an assignment is due, which two assignments are due, let's actually go to the grades page for clarity. If you, you know, it's a little bit weird for this first two assignments, but once the, you know, the, the checkpoints and the normal assignment deadlines diverge, which they will eventually, you'll see. Uh, if you complete everything by the deadline, but don't do the checkpoint, you will not get anything for the checkpoint grade. So if you do 100% of everything after the checkpoint, but before the deadline, you will get a 70% on the assignment. You will have done 100% of the challenges, which gives you you know, that 70% grade, but you will get a 0% on the checkpoint because you did not follow through with the checkpoints. You gotta do the checkpoints. More likely than not, the checkpoints will help you. They're, they're a little bit of a, you know, a fun grade inflation thing, probably, uh, unless you don't follow along and do the check by the checkpoint. It's making the early assignments worth more as long as you follow along at a good pace. Make sure to start early. Yes. The explicit goal of the checkpoint is to force you to yes. do that with a stick yes. because you can go through and solve every single challenge and earn your belt. We'll gladly you you get the belt, you get the belt, but you're going to get like a C. C minus. C minus. Well, you don't have minus, but a C. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, let's see. Question on Twitch. Will grades be updated automatically as we keep doing the challenges? Yes. Always. If you're ever wondering what is my status in this course, as far as grades are concerned, Check here. This semester for the first time, we are attempting to also synchronize your grades to Canvas Live. It might not work out. It might have bugs. We'll figure it out. This page right here is ground truth. And if you think there's something wrong with that, then message me if you think there's a bug in this page. But this should be ground truth. This is I'm, when we're running stats reports on the course to see how everyone's doing. This is the, what we're looking at. If the Canvas is wrong, and it's showing that you get an A plus. It might be office on. will not be honored. Yes. So honor this page. Home college website. Let us know though if it, Canvas is lying to you in a mean way. But home college website. This is the ground truth. Canvas is like we're going to try our best to support it as well. Okay. Um, final thing. Uh, late policy. What happens? Yes. If people are late. So we also. Well, I guess we want to go back. And to I honestly stuff. don't remember if. We forgot to put that to the, the syllabus. Oh, I'm sure we did, right? I, you know, you'd expect. Late? Yeah, we fucked Oh, up. no, we didn't include it. Okay, right. we will update. It's only to your benefit. The syllabus is about to get more generous. Uh, after the assignment deadline, everything is still worth 50%. So that only applies to these little 7% guys. Again, the checkpoint is pass-fail. When that checkpoint is due, you're never getting the credit after the fact. But for 70% of your grade, we have a 50% late policy. So if you do everything the last day of the class, you will get a 35%. If you wait until the last weekend before grades are due and you solve everything, we'll give you a 35%. It'll be great. Uh, probably you won't pass, but you won't have a zero. Yeah. Okay. And then finally, let's talk about extra credit. Yes. All right. Next uh, point. Again, this is, oh, there's a question. Go for it. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So even the assignment that we released uh, last week and is due on Sunday at 11:59 p.m. If you wait two months before you know you go back and solve some of the later levels, it's still worth 50 percent. Yep, 50 percent all the way up until grades are due which I believe is December 16th. So probably what's gonna happen, it's December 16th, I'm gonna click a button, the grades will synchronize, and that'll be that. 
Uh, so all the way up until grades are due like December 16th. And uh, that doesn't apply to the checkpoint. Once the checkpoint's gone, it's gone. Yeah, the checkpoint though is, the whole point of the checkpoint is to make sure you're following along in the course and reward you with grades for doing that. Sweet. Uh, okay, extra credit. So uh, not only do we have 100% of your grade being assignments, but there's an extra 15% uh, possible, potentially. We'll see how many of you actually get 15% extra credit. Uh, but you can earn up to 15% extra credit. Yes, a whole like letter and a half of grade of extra credit in this course. Uh, the way that you earn that, well, we have a few ways. This is This is probably the most fun way. And for many of you, maybe the most approachable way to get a lot of extra credit. You can get extra credit by making memes. So we have the Discord. We have a memes channel on the Discord. If you post a good, on-topic, educational, not bad meme, you will get up to half a percent of extra credit every week. So you can get half a percent per week. That will reset at Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Well, I think we may need to update that to say that, but... Sunday, 11.59 p.m. every week. So that means you can get like, I don't know, maybe 8% extra credit. I'm not sure exactly how that aligns. Maybe it's 8.5%. Uh, but you can get half a percent of extra credit per week uh, for good memes. These memes have to be good, though. Uh, so what is a good meme? A good meme is an on-topic. So right now, the first two assignments have to do with like Linux command line and HTTP. Hopefully, there's like a certain like insightful snarkiness or something in your meme. Something that like, it's conveying that you understand the material in some like interesting way. Uh, that means that, you know, Don over here laughs at his computer, sees that and marks you down for a good meme. There's a, a liked memes channel for like logs of this. We'll try and also make sure to update your grades as often as we can to make sure you understand. But there's a liked memes channel that has a log of if your meme was liked or not. It'll also have an emoji on it. Uh, post good memes. Jan, do you want to talk about bad memes? Yeah, so there's a lot of people posting memes, and some of them are terrible. Even if they're on Linux, someone goes up to Twitter, finds some random low-effort meme, and puts it in the channel. Boom. Beam jam. So, yeah. we are trying to keep the quality of memes relatively high. Bad memes, you get one shot, one strike. You go to meme jail, you're no longer allowed to post memes, potentially for the rest of the semester. You lose this entire <laughs> route, this route to earning the extra credit. There are others, and you'll have to take them instead. Probably a couple of times on this semester, you'll have uh, jail breaks where we'll just release people from meme jail. But people make bad memes straight to jail. Straight to jail. Don't post bad memes, you will go to jail, meme jail. Okay. Uh, there are other ways, though. So if you find yourself in the unfortunate position, I think there are Unfortunately, maybe a few students already in meme jail. Very sad. Don't worry, maybe we'll, we have two people, in two people are already in meme jail. We, we will probably be extra generous and release you in like a week since maybe you didn't read the syllabus or something. We'll, we'll probably be nice to you and release you soon. Uh, if you find yourself in the unfortunate position of meme jail, don't worry, there's still 15%. You can earn it entirely without memes, uh, though memes might be the easiest way. Uh, you can earn extra credit for helping other people. Uh, so on the Discord, you'll, we'll talk a little bit about the collaboration policy. The Discord is meant to be a collaborative environment for helping each other understand the concepts presented in this class. And so if you are kind enough to go and help your fellow student and also maybe encourage them to thank you in case they forget to thank you, hopefully this culture develops nicely, uh, you can receive extra credit. We have a very complicated formula for how you earn your extra credit. You get, oh boy, this plus did not work. You get 1.337 times log base two of the number of no, banks you received. Raised to the log base two. Wait, raised? Yeah, that's an extra. Oh, it's raised to, okay, even more complicated. Uh, 1.337 to the log base two of thanks. In other words, 
you get 1.3% extra credit if you help, what, two people? I think that's how yeah. algorithms work. If you help two people, you're gonna get 1.3% extra credit. And if you help on 256 occasions, maybe you're so helpful, you send this like very insightful uh, post that discusses a concept and like six students, thank you for that post. Well, that's like six occasions immediately off the bat. Uh, if you do 256 help interactions or whatever, you get 10.2% extra credit. That's how the math works. Plug it in a calculator, you'll figure out how it works, even though it's, you know, it's a little bit of a mess of a formula, but that's how helping other people for extra credit works. Uh, we'll point out abuse of the system. I know what you're thinking. This is a security course. I can abuse the course. No, you cannot. Uh, fortunately, we have the hammer that is an academic integrity policy. Do not abuse the system. If you start messaging your friends about how you're going to trade things, so you're going to form these crazy thanks circles or something. I don't know. Don't do it. We will detect it. We're going to run statistical analyses on this. We're going to run the entire Discord to ChatGPT to see is this actually helpful. We will find you. Uh, don't abuse the system. Uh, this will, uh, yeah, don't abuse the system, basically. This is like, you know, we want a nice collaborative environment. It'll be nice for everyone. Just don't abuse the system. Okay. Another way to earn extra credit new this semester is CTF challenges. You'll see that on the dojo, if I switch over to the dojo, uh, we have this cool CTF archive dojo thing uh, that hosts a whole bunch of challenges. If you solve a challenge in here, that's half a percent of extra credit. You can do this, I guess, all the way up to the 15% max. You will need to submit a detailed original write-up alongside to show you understand what happened as part of you solving this. Um, we'll put a Google survey link or something in the syllabus immediately after this class so that you know where to submit that right up to. Uh, but in theory, you could get all the way up to 15% extra credit just solving these challenges. These challenges are probably going to be hard. Uh, so this won't be the easiest way to earn extra credit, but it is a very educational way to earn so extra credit. CTFs are cybersecurity competitions. For those that don't know, they occur roughly every weekend or so. and if you scroll down, this has CTF challenges archived running back over a decade. You click into one, pull up uh, the, the challenges themselves. You see scores going from anywhere from uh, 10 to 500, 1,000 or so. The higher the score, likely the much harder the challenge. Yep. So keep that in mind. We're not putting a minimum score, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All in, in Poem College itself, they all count for one point. But, yeah. um, Maybe you can also go through and analyze how many people have solved the challenge. That might yeah. also indicate some level of difficulty. But this is another way to earn extra credit. A lot of the topics or some of the challenges might have overlap with educational material in the course. Some of the challenges might be super advanced and not covered until a graduate course here at ASU. Uh, it's kind of up to you, uh, but you will submit a write-up alongside to show kind of what you did to solve that. Cool. All right. That's extra credit. Yes. Uh, that should be... Oh, the final one is if you find an actual bug yes. in the phone college infrastructure and you report it responsibly rather than exploit it, then we'll also give you extra credit up to... Uh, what was the maximum? 15%. Yeah, up to, up to the full 15. You find a critical bug and this happens then uh, you get that that uh, uh, bonus. Yep. All right. Other stuff is pretty standard, except for let's talk about collaboration. Actually, and real quick. If you're an honors student, want to do an honors contract, read the syllabus, email us. We do have an honors contract. Try and get out new this semester. Uh, that is on the syllabus. And the deadline for you know signing up is probably soon, right? Yeah, I, I really don't know how Barrett works, but yeah. your deadline, hopefully you know how it works, is probably soon. Email us ASAP uh, to sign up for an honors contract. Cool. All right, Jan, do you want to talk about the collaboration? Yes. See. Yeah, I was, I've been answering questions on Twitch in your name. Right, you on, did you get the camera? You got the camera. I got the camera. All right. So here we go again. Okay. And we have 10 minutes, I think, till the end of class. 10 minutes till the end of class. Left in class, right? Is that correct? Okay. Right. Then we'll do the meme review on Wednesday. Let's do it quick. All right. Awesome. Quick note on academic integrity. Don't cheat. Last semester, people didn't get this memo. 
Uh, we had something like uh, over 300 students get busted for academic integrity. This is a lesson in itself. If we don't catch you right away and you cheat, we might catch you later. The statute of limitations is something like five years. You could be a millionaire at Microsoft and then suddenly, wham! And the, luckily not mean jail, but something almost as bad. All right, so please do not cheat, obviously. Um, we'll be monitoring. Uh, we have some pretty advanced monitoring now. It's, uh, and even if you slide under the radar, the radar might change and the radar can look backwards in time. Yeah. Um, we've never, ever had a problem with public help in Discord. Don't be afraid to help in Discord. We will tell you if you're being way too helpful. And specifically, the Poland College Discord. That's right. DM is not a private server. That is not OK. So what is OK? You can collaborate publicly on the Poland College Discord, publicly on the Poland College Discord, or in recitation on a conceptual level, right? Don't share code, share ideas, share hints, and you'll get extra credit for it as people thank you. Do not go to any other Discord. If there is a Discord for 365, and there can be, and there usually is, everyone on that Discord is cheating if they discuss any assignment stuff at all, even on a conceptual level. It is not allowed to use any other Discord. We have a Discord. Use our Discord. If you have suggestions for improving our Discord, please tell us. Any other Discord, I would suggest leaving right now. Um, any other digital channels, don't do it. That goes for SMS, all of that fun stuff. Uh, don't collaborate in person outside of recitation. Come to recitation. Um, and definitely don't collaborate with prior students of the course. That's almost surefire way to uh, get flagged because again our radar sees backwards in time we have the eye of sauron installed in our servers literally like everything is being recorded is the way you should think about it when you sit down at your laptop and you enter pong college just think there's a webcam pointed at your screen everything is being recorded when it wants okay we will find you awesome all right you might want to work ahead you're welcome to do so keep in mind that uh the material is very likely to change we update things we tweak things probably about 60 percent of the material will change but you're welcome to work ahead if you're really interested but consider that being out of passion rather than out of potential necessarily optimizing your grade all right uh if you work ahead very important you will not end up on the leaderboard for the course because the leaderboard only starts counting solves after the assignment launches uh, so if you want that, you might want to wait, but you can still get a belt and you will still get uh, the grades if those assignments don't change. Some people here have uh, accommodations through the student, uh, I forgot what sales stand for, but through sales. Um, there are no exams, so any exam accommodations are kind of uh, uh, orthogonal to the course. Uh, attendance is not mandatory and there are automatic recordings, which I think uh, meet a lot of other accommodations. Some people have flexible assignment deadline accommodations in this course, assignments stack on each other, right? So as an assignment expires 14 hours later, the next assignment launches, right? Uh, that has some implications for, uh, these flexible assignment, um, uh, accommodations that make them not really makes sense i'll also say like in the past we've like tried experimenting with like giving people that request these deadlines for these reasons by uh, extending their deadlines it i think 99 percent of the time is a disaster like if you let these assignments get your deadline extended far it's going to all build up it's going to be a lot of anxiety for you you're going to fail the course anyways if you don't want it trust yeah. me we've also tried like incomplete grades we have never seen an incomplete grade work it, it just doesn't work. Just follow along at the right pace. If you need to withdraw, you can withdraw and take it again next semester, et cetera, but just follow along. Yep. When are we done? At uh, we've got five more minutes. Five more minutes. All right. So we saw one meme. Let's look at some more. Again, 
rather than extending assignments, extra credit is actually much more helpful. Help people, etc. You, it will add up. It can add up. Um, whether it will is up to you. Um, now, reminder: as you make memes, show up over here. Likely, if you've made it to this slide, you got a like meme. If you didn't make it to the slide, it's not the end of the world. Uh, if you didn't get a like meme, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't actually necessarily mean immediate meme jail. It just means your meme wasn't very good. All right? Now, again, you post bad, low effort, copy-paste memes straight to meme jail. A, uh, you know, some, some there was a HTTP uh, request meme with the three dragons. That's a very common meme people make, but it was a uh, kind of a convergent inspiration situation. That's fine. That person did get sent to meme jail. They can meme again. They can meme multiple times with multiple good uh, high effort attempts, and eventually they'll get the meme uh, like me for the week. But you start copy pasting, straight to jail. All right, good memes. These are awesome examples of memes that are related to the material. These are awesome memes of the file system quest, which may be a little too long. And you know what? I wrote the damn thing and I didn't really think, oh, it's too long. It used to be longer. But you know, the more memes you get about that, the more I start thinking, yeah, maybe it is a little too long. <laughs> All right. Um, keep in mind, other courses are also using the Poem College uh, uh, framework for their uh, other courses at ASU and beyond um, for their education. So for example, CSE 466, CSE 598, um, these are using phone College as well. If you get a notice that phone College is live on Twitch and you click in and there's a guy there that looks like Jesus, you're in the 466 uh, uh, stream and, and you're watching Rob. Amazing instructor, great guy. Highly recommend watching it, but it's irrelevant to this course. Uh, so keep in mind, you might also see some memes, like that's a 466 meme. Um, they're gonna be in basically debugging hell for the next semester. Uh, you will not be doing the same stuff they'll be doing, even though you share some of the same computing resources, Pwn.college and the Pwn College Discord. All right. The key thing about, you know, you're gonna wait till the last second right before the checkpoint and guess what's gonna happen? Our server's gonna fucking melt. This happened even already. We had an insane situation where our server just decided it was tired and went to sleep a couple of times. Literally just went to sleep. This could happen. We fight, fix that specific situation, but it can happen and it usually happens right up against the deadline and guess what? The deadlines stack up against each other and we do not extend them. It is up to you to not put yourself in the situation where a measly 12 hours of downtime are gonna cost you your grade. And typically it's not 12 hours. Connor's always awake. He, he actually sleeps in the server room in a cot by the server to make sure that the moment he hears the, the, the fans stop, he's up and he's pushing buttons. But do not put yourself in a situation where you miss the checkpoint or you uh, miss uh, solves because the server in, is crappy. In the last few hours of the assignment, it will just be sluggish and slow and miserable. And you'll say, why didn't I do this yesterday? It, it's guaranteed to happen. I am actively working on making it so we have like 10x the computing resources so that this happens less or does not happen. That is not an effect yet. I'm trying my best to make this happen. Uh, it will happen. At Sunday, if you wait until Sunday at 8 p.m., it will be slow and miserable. I will be there fixing the server, putting out fires as fast as I can. It's going to be miserable. Half of you are not listening to me right now. That's okay. You're going to deal with this. It's going to be miserable. I highly encourage you to not be one of those half of the people in the room. It will be terrible. Some more things, right? Uh, keep in mind that as things are slow, again, ideally you don't put yourself in this situation. We have very finite resources to keep things up. So if, for example, Connor is 
basically manually typing requests into the database to, uh, I don't know, fix things, uh, he's not going to have the bandwidth to help answer questions. And, you know, who knows? I might be getting my other ear operated on or something. So please don't expect that in the last minute, the prof and TA team is going to go insane. There's only two profs. There's only, I don't know, 18 or so TAs, but there's a lot of students. And, and when things are on fire in the last second is uh, a, a difficult time. I think last semester we made the server stable, but it will still be sluggish at the end. I, like you probably will still be able to type LS very slowly. It's just gonna feel painful. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> Connor was going to demonstrate the Dota. We'll do that on Wednesday. Hopefully by then it will be irrelevant. If you are completely confused in this course before this ends, hopefully in the whatever, it okay. doesn't okay. matter. Okay. If you are confused in any way, go to pwn.college. Go to the Getting Started Dojo. This is it. The setup link we shared at the start. We watch this stream on Twitch or YouTube. Go to the setup thing and go to this Getting Started. This will explain how the Dojo works. You can do everything in your browser. You can do VS Code in the browser, a desktop environment in the browser. It's super cool. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but this will make things make sense. And just because the class is almost over, I want to stress this very aggressively. Two assignments currently active. Do this Sunday, 11.59 p.m. These are the two assignments. Start today. Start right now. Yes. Okay. Right. Cool. That's it. See you Wednesday. See ya.